Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss. I have Steve, my business partner and husband with me here today. Hi everyone. And today we're going to be talking about a new line of color pencils that Faber-Castell is producing. Mm. Pretty exciting. I've heard and seen these pencils in the coloring groups and I decided, you know, it's Faber-Castell. I better get them and see what kind of quality and how they color. They are called the Faber-Castell Black Edition. Mm. And the pencils are black, they're triangular, they're very interesting. Mm. So we're going to talk about these pencils and we're going to compare them to the other lines that Faber-Castell produces and see who are these for, how much do they cost, and in the end of this video I will give you my recommendations as to whether I think you should be purchasing these or passing on them. So let's get started talking about Faber-Castell Black Edition. Okay, so let's start by talking about the Faber-Castell ecosystem. Sounds good. And which lines of pencils they have and who they're for. Uh, we'll start with talking about the one that most of us love and would love to own. I own the full set of this, so that's really exciting. These are the Faber-Castell Polychromos. They're slick, they're they are the most layerable pencil that I've ever tried. They are amazing. They're more of an oil type based color pencil. They're round, they're beautiful, they're great in the hand, and they're artist grade. So there's not much bad I can say about these pencils. They're beautiful <laughs> and I love them. Um, I do have some prices for all of these so we can do some price comparing. And I tried to keep it around the 50 size set because that's the set that I own of the Black Edition is the 50. So I thought it would be fair to compare as close to a 50 set as possible. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so if you were to buy this set right here, it's a 60 color set. That's the closest they have to 50 that I could see. It's $84 right now. That's US on Amazon in June of 2023. $84, so that's about $1.40 per pencil to get these beautiful artist grade pencils. Okay, now the next in line in the Faber-Castell ecosystem is the gold Faber color pencils. These are a really pretty pencil. They're um, round, they're color dipped. They are pretty awesome. Their creative studio line is what they're called. And they have in the Faber-Castell world a lot of tools that are in this creative studio line. And they are all kind of packaged similarly with the blue logo where the artist quality um, Faber-Castell products are more packaged this way. The gold Faber line is um, I think mainly for artists that are mid like intermediate to beginner and they are more of a craftsy type artist. Hmm. That's who I think they are trying to catch with this line of color pencils. Okay. Oh, and the price for a 48 set of the gold fabers is $38 right now, and that's about 80 cents per pencil. So a very good budget-friendly line. <laughs> Now next up we have this guy right here. This is the Faber-Castell and I've heard them called a couple different things. I've heard them called the red line and I've heard them called the classic line. Hmm. These pencils are a hexagonal pencil and they are definitely being geared towards beginners and children is more who they are shooting so this line like their for. Student line. Yeah. So this set here, no, a 60 set is only $25 in oh, this wow. line. Yeah. So that's 42 cents per pencil. Good budget set with good colors. Um, difference between this line and this line, this line you can get open stock one at a time. Mm. This line you can't. Of course the polychromos you can also get open stock one at a time. And these are more, rel more available open stock at a lot of different art stores and craft stores where these you'd probably have to go to Dick Blick or maybe even to Faber-Castell themselves in order to get individual gold Faber pencils. 
Okay, now also in the red line, they have their specialty pencils that I thought I would just quickly mention. They're gorgeous metallic pencils that we really like here on this channel are only $8.50 for this box right here. So that's 71 cents per um, pencil. And then also in the red line, they make these bicolor pencils. So there's only 18 pencils in here, but there's 36 colors. And this set right here is $9.88, only 55 cents per pencil. Hmm. So they're already making really good budget friendly pencils. So I was a little surprised when they came out with another line. And let me show this one to you. This is what we're here to talk about today is the black edition. They have these in box sets of 12, 24, um, 50. So the price of these pencils here, you can see they kind of have the same red line type marketing um, symbols on their packaging here. Mm. So I think it's part of the red line or the beginning um, children type color uh, market. And I got some prices for us on this one as well. The black edition, this box set right here is $26.11 right now. So that's just 52 cents a pencil, which the red line is coming in less expensive than that at 42 cents per pencil. And so the next thing we need to do is unbox swatch and look at these pencils up nice and close and see what they look like and get a, a general first impression as we're swatching them. After that I'm going to do some coloring with them and we'll talk about as I color with them how I feel about the pencils. So let's get unboxing. Okay here they are and they got a little bit squished in shipping via Amazon so hopefully they're okay inside. You read the back right here, it says extra smooth, super soft lead for rich, brilliant colors, ideal for light colored and dark papers. We're going to test that. And it says they are made in Brazil, not Germany, which is where most of Faber-Castell products are coming out of, at least their main lines are coming out of Germany. Okay, let's open this up. There's supposed to be a, a fancy stand that they, they, can stand in. There we go. That's our first look. Let me give them a little smell. Um, they they don't smell super great of wood, but not too chemically, so that's good. And it looks like it just sort of unfolds like this to become a stand that you can sit on your table. Well that's pretty clever. Let's take a look at one pencil here. Alright, they are triangular. They have a color dipped on the end so you know what color you have. It says Faber-Castell. It's all black including the wood and it has a number so hopefully yep it's a a unique number per pencil so we have a way to identify them. So the next thing I want to do is swatch them and see how these 50 pencils look on three different papers. So I'm going to be using my swatch books that we produce here at Coloring Bliss. This one holds 3,600 swatches and I have it printed on the color pencil paper so it's perfect for swatching and testing color pencils. So I'll be swatching it in here, back way back here is where we're at in this book now. And then I'm also going to swatch it on black because it says that they're good on black paper. So this is the same swatch book, just printed on black paper. So we'll come way back here. These books are starting to get full. Won't be long and I'll need another swatch book. And then finally, I want to see all 50 pencils on our tan paper. Again, same book, just printed on tan paper. So we can see what a mid-tone type paper looks like with these beautiful pencils. So we'll flip to this page. 
And the first thing I'll do is write their names on each of the swatches and then swatch the color and we'll swatch every single pencil five times. So we have 150 swatches ahead of us. Cue the music montage. All right, the first thing I want to mention is these colored pencils go down really silky smooth and feel very um, strong. So it doesn't feel like I'm gonna break the tip when I lean into them and do my heavy burnish pressure on one side. And when I go to the light pressure, it feels like the color is coming off in a really wonderful, pretty way. So I'm happy with the way they feel as I am swatching. Crumbs um, are very minimal, but they are there. You can see here, especially on the black swatches, the crumbs that are accumulating and the dust that happens as you're swatching and working with these color pencils. There's a whole bunch of crumbs there. So um, they're not a problem, at least not yet. As we color with them more, we'll see if it's a problem or not. But so far, I'm really happy with them. This is what the colors look like on black. Let me zoom back a bit for you. So we have a really nice, pretty white. It's not a horrible white. It's, it's quite opaque, but I don't think it would beat my favorite white pencils. It's a good spread of colors, although I feel like we're missing um, some colors in the set. We'll talk about that here in a minute. The black is a really good deep black. It could be a little blacker if I'm going to be extra picky, but it does the job for a black. So let's look at them on tan. On the tan paper, they're doing decent. Um, I've seen better, but they are all, you can tell all the different colors, so they're doing what they're supposed to do on the tan. It's just not wowing me. I think it wowed me a little bit more over here on the black paper. And then when we look at them at white, um, you can see all the nice bright colors that you get in the 50 set. Uh, there's a few things that I think they could have done better, like this. these two right here are really close in color. Um, they're different, um, but they're close enough that in a small set of 50, I wish we had a light blue, for instance. And that's what I'm going to talk about now, is the color balance of the sets. I feel like we're missing light colors. We've got some really good mid-tones and a couple good deep tones, but in the light tones, we have some light pink, a light orange, but we only have really one true yellow color. In the yellow green colors, we've got this this decent one here, but but it's more of a light green than it is a light yellow green. We have this nice yellow green here, but that's about it. No really good light blues, which is a real faux pas, especially for coloring um, because we do a lot of skies. Uh, blue is a very um, important color and I feel like we're just really lacking in blues. There, We would have had one more blue, but I feel like 724 is a mistake. Let me show you the pencil. 707, 724. So this is 724 and the color dip on the end indicates that it should be a really nice beautiful blue but what we've got is a gray. So I'm wondering if this is a mistake either it's um, should belong down here. Oh see look at that 724 and 724. They're the same number. This one this is a mistake. It um, so that's been dipped with the wrong color and they are using it as a blue. So we have two 724s. That's really interesting. So that's a an oops. And again, because we're working in a small set of 50, it's, it's kind of discouraging to have little mistakes like that. Um, that make the coloring a little trickier. I don't need another gray. I really could have used another blue. Okay, let's talk some more about the actual pencil, the core size, what it's made of, and the shape of the pencil, and um, then we're going to do some coloring. All right, so um, let's take a look at a blue pencil here. 
and we'll compare it to uh, Faber-Castell's Polychromos line, so it's brother pencil. <laughs> the Polychromos is an art, um, high professional type um, line of pencils, and it has, um, you know, fancier writing on it. It has a full name and a number, and then it also has a star system to tell you what um, light fast rating it has so that you can use it in long term um, art pieces that you um, want to last for a hundred years. Um, the Faber-Castell Black Edition pencil, instead of being round like the Polychromos, is a triangular pencil, which um, shouldn't be any problem for your color pencil sharpeners. They should work just fine with that. Um, if you have like an exacto electric sharpener, sometimes they'll have a triangle shaped slot for a pencil of this shape, so you can keep that in mind. As far as the core of the pencil goes, I used my digital calipers here to measure the cores of both pencils. This one's coming in at about 2.8 to 3 millimeters for the core on the black edition and just to compare this one here is anywhere from 3.8 to 4 millimeters so you're getting a lot more product in the polychromos versus the black edition but they've got to find a way to cut back somewhere so that we can have the good price that we're having on the black edition. Now speaking of the wrong color, what I did is I went on their website. So if we check out Faber-Castell's website here and look at their entry here for the black edition box of 50, you shift all the way to the bottom here and they're giving us a color name for every color number. So if you want to get that information for your pencils, that's where you can find it. So I went through and I named all the colors and did discover that we're missing number 736 blue. And that's one of the colors I was saying I, I feel like they're really missing out on. So this one here, this 724, let me bring it up again, definitely is a production mistake. They've got the right number for the right core, but it's in the wrong body with the wrong dip. And they've given us the two dark grays basically instead of one blue and one dark gray. So a little bit of an oops there that's frustrating to me as a colorist because I use blue a lot. Okay, I think we have covered all the little specs that we need to know about the Faber-Castell Black Edition. So let's do some coloring. And I think as I look at the swatches, I'm most impressed by the way they look on black. I feel like they're really popping and doing a lot of magical things here on the black paper and because it's Faber-Castell black edition I think it's only natural that we do some coloring on black paper. So let's do it and let's see how these perform in real situation real coloring. For this mandala I have it printed on black paper because the black edition Faber-Castell pencils are supposed to perform beautifully on dark paper. So this is the perfect place to experiment. I love these mandalas because they have wide open spaces. It gives me an opportunity to try blends and layering and see what these pencils can do on black paper. Now I did cheat when use a different product for the really white, white highlights. I used my white Posca paint pen. And the background, I used some soft pastels to get that really soft, um, mellow, almost cloudy looking background. I really like how that background turned out.
Okay, welcome back from all of that swatching and coloring. As you can see, we got a beautiful result with this mandala. Is it the most vibrant colors I've ever colored with on black? It's close. Some of the, um, okay, how a color pencil performs on black depends on how opaque that color pencil is. If it's a very translucent color pencil like the polychromos, then a lot of the black is going to show up through the stro through your strokes. Almost no matter how hard you work, it's just going to show a lot of black up through those translucent colors. So I never reach for polychromos when I'm doing black coloring because they just I don't like the way they look. I prefer a much more opaque color pencil. These pencils, the black edition, are definitely more opaque than the polychromo, so I can see why they're saying that you can go ahead and use them on a tan paper or on a black paper. So yes, I agree with that. Are they the most opaque color pencils I've ever colored with? No, but you'd have to get up into like the Derwent um, drawing line, they are beautiful on black paper and they are very opaque color pencil. So if you'd like me to talk more about what I recommend for coloring on black paper, comment below and we can do a follow-up video on that. Now as I was working with the black edition pencils on this mandala, I came across a couple things that were very frustrating and the first is sharpening those color pencils. Because these pencils are triangular, I ended up having to sharpen them twice. First, I sent them through my Coombe handheld pencil sharpener, and that kind of knocked off the triangular edges at the tip of the pencil. And then I was able to put them into my electric Exacto School Pro sharpener, and they worked fine there. So it was sort of a two-step process, which was annoying to me. And even after knocking off those edges with my Coombe, I found that these pencils would get jammed up in my Exacto electric pencil sharpener, which was very frustrating when I'm trying to color quickly. So that was the first big problem that I ran into with the color pencils. The second is that these pencils do not want to layer. They like to blend to each other. So you can get two colors to blend quite beautifully together. Let me show you. See how really pretty those two colors came together? And those two colors are pretty far apart on the color wheel. So to have them come together so soft and pretty was really good. But when I tried layering, putting lots of layers down to get a much more opaque lay down, these pencils do not want to layer, really? <laughs> which was surprising because we're working with a Faber-Castell pencil. And when I think Faber-Castell, I think layering. You can layer all day with them, but not the black edition. They like to blend. A two color blend is really good and easy to do, but to do a multi-layer type blend, I think you're only going Going to be frustrated because I was very frustrated with that. So sharpening the pencils and layering the pencils. And then of course as I was swatching we discovered that there was one pencil that was wrong in the set. Hmm. It has uh, the right body and the right core because the number they put on it was right but they dipped the pencil in the wrong color and so we ended up with two cores of the same color and we lost one blue in the mix. Oh. So that was frustrating too. So these pencils are being made in Brazil. Um, let's see where these ones are being made. These are made in Germany. These ones are also made in Germany and of course we know the polychromos are made in Germany. So they've outsourced to a pencil manufacturer in Brazil to make the black edition. And I think maybe they need to do a little quality check on what's going on in their Brazil um, location because we had a problem with the set that I purchased. Okay, so my final thoughts. Should you purchase the black edition pencils and who are they for? I would say they're definitely a beginner to maybe intermediate colorist would find these a lot of fun to work with. The black 
wood is just a gimmick. The triangle shape is frustrating if you have a sharpening. If you're like me and you just want the sharpening to be done and quick, then you're going to be frustrated with the triangular pencils. But other than that, they're kind of fun. They lay down good on black. They're not that expensive. We're talking 26 bucks for this box right here. But would I tell you to rush out and buy them if you are like me and you're a color pencil collector? Well, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to reach for these pencils again, to be honest, because they just, they didn't layer, the, the sharpening was frustrating, and there's a lack of colors in this set. There are lots of mid-tones, so it doesn't inspire me to reach for them and color with them again. So I would say pass. Yeah. Pass on these unless you're a collector and you really want them. If you have purchased them, enjoy them. Do those two color blends and really enjoy that blending that they do and have fun with them on some different colored papers. But there's other pencils that are better. The polychromos are better. Um, they're not as opaque, but they're better. And in fact, I'm wondering now if in the future we need to do another video where we put head to head the red line the gold fabber and the polychromos oh, yeah. and see how those three compete against each other. If that's a video that you would like to see, a polychromos head to head to head, <laughs> then make sure you comment below and let me know you'd like me to do that. So, You know, this to me seems like an Amazon play. <laughs> like they're trying to compete with the Amazon pencils. Yeah, because they outsourced it. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that they're black and they're triangle... Yeah, you know, there's just kind of gimmicky. Yeah, they seem very gimmicky. Yeah, and I my guess would be that they're just trying to compete on Amazon a little better or something. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I it agree. doesn't really make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either because they already have better pencils for less money or about the same amount of money. So right. why come in with a cheap line of pencils that don't perform amazingly? Yeah. It, it, it like Steve says, it just feels like they're they're putting another product out there, trying to catch some money, and see if we all jump on the bandwagon, which I did. What I is... jumped on and I bought them. <laughs> Are they super soft? Yeah, they're not as soft as Prismacolors. Like I said, I'm I'm just not wowed. Yeah. So they'll just go back on my shelf, and if we have another Faber Castell video in the future, they'll come out and they'll have their moment in the light again. But then they'll go back into my collection. So yeah, I think it's a pass on these fun little pencils. But like I said, if you own them, enjoy them. Do those two color blends and have fun with your pencils. Hopefully this helped. Um, give you some knowledge on a new product and guide you as you do your purchasing. Let me know in the comments. Are you going to buy them or are you going to pass on these pencils? Thank you so much for watching and enjoying this video with me and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone! <laughs> How am I supposed to talk if you're barking in your sleep? Quality check on what's going on in their Brazil um, location because we had a problem with the set that I purchased. <laughs> Her little tail. Hi. Hello, did you have a good dream? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Sorry, she's just so cute back there. <laughs> okay.